welcome you all in this our lecture series program this is our lecture 25th and we are going to talk about pragmatics this content is from an introduction to linguistic semester one those are students who have been studying in semester one this is very essential and important topic for them what we are going to discuss within our today's lecture that is what is uh, pragmatics uh, we are going to learn different definitions of pragmatics and examples of pragmatics today number two context in pragmatics how context is used in pragmatics so this is our uh, second outline we are going to discuss number three animated examples uh, i have collected here so many animated examples for you for your understanding so let's uh, talk about one by one these all areas and outlines within our today's topic Pragmatics is the study of a speaker's meanings, not focusing on the phonetics or grammatical form of utterances, but in a state on what the speaker's intentions and beliefs are. So when we are talking about pragmatics, we are talking about the meanings, but that is the meaning of uh, a speaker, right? So this is the difference in um, semantics uh, when we were talking about uh, the study of meaning but this is uh, pragmatics is the study of a speaker's meaning what are the speaker's intentions and beliefs he is talking about he is uh, uttering the words so uh, this is all about the pragmatics number two pragmatics is the study of contextual meaning when we are talking about pragmatics we are collecting and getting the contextual meanings so here is number third pragmatics is the study of how more is communicated than is said sometimes the speakers they humorously are when they are in rage they speak a lot they uh, communicate more than what has been said so for example pragmatics is the study of uh, the expression of relative distance uh, for example the event is uh, uh, older than a week or two weeks or so on so the expressions uh, we are talking about are having a relative distance here i have uh, rendered uh, the animated examples for you um, in which uh, uh, these speakers, they are making an elaboration about the pragmatics. Hopefully, this could have been very helpful. Let's watch. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Anna. Good, thanks. And you? Good, too. But a bit in a hurry. My course starts in 10 minutes. Oh, what course do you have now? Pragmatics. Pragmatics? What's that about? Well, it is a really interesting course, but I have only got five minutes to explain. Basically, pragmatics is the study of speaker meaning, as distinct from word or sentence meaning. Um, I don't understand. Can you say that in easier words again? <laughs> no worries. I had troubles as well at the beginning. So pragmatics is the study of the relationship between words and users of the words. So, for example, I have got a new boat, and now I have a specific picture of a boat, and you have a different one in your mind. So, it is about the interpretation of the words and the utterances, and about trying to read what people mean by their utterances. Ah, okay, now I've got an idea. If you're interested in more, I can recommend the book Pragmatics by George Yule. That is the book we are using in our course. He also explains pragmatics in more detail, along four different dimensions. Ah, do you still have time to give me a quick overview about that as well? Yes, sure. First of all, pragmatics is the study of speaker meaning. That means it is concerned with the interpretation of the speaker meaning by the listener. So, for example, if someone asks, may I have a glass of water? The listener interprets that the speaker is thirsty. Oh, I never thought about it from that perspective. What is the second dimension? The second dimension is the study of contextual meaning. So it is about the interpretation of what people exactly mean in a specific context 
and how the context influences what is said. For example, you are at my place and I ask you if you could bring me a glass of water. So the utterances are not fitting the context because usually I would offer you something to drink at my place and not the other way around. So you can see how the context influences the meaning. Hmm, I'm not quite sure if I got that right. Could you give me an additional example? No problem. Think about the beginning of a conversation. The first person asks, Hi, how are you? And the second person answers with, Ah, lovely weather today. So you can see it is grammatically correct, but it doesn't fit the context and the situation. Ah, now I got it. And do you want to know about the third dimension? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Not at all. It is a really good practice for me. The third dimension is the study of how more gets communicated than is said, which means that you, as a listener, have to investigate the invisible meaning. What do you mean by invisible meaning? Hmm, maybe it is easier to understand if I give you an example. If someone asks you, please close the window, the invisible meaning of the person asking is that the person is freezing or that it is too noisy outside, depending on the situation. So, for example, if I hear noises outside during the utterance, please close the window, the invisible meaning which is not being spoken is that it is too noisy. Yeah, exactly. And the last dimension is the study of the expression of relative distance. So the physical and social closeness determines how much needs to be said. An example for physical closeness would be, take this. So only people close to the speaker know what this refers to. And social closeness can be found between friends. An example would be if I tell you, we had fun on the weekend. You would know that it was last weekend and that you know which friends of mine are meant by we. Oh, okay. Yes, that makes sense. It seems to be a very complex topic. <laughs> yes, it is. But it is super interesting too. I'm really sorry, but I think I have to hurry up now. Yeah, sure, you better be on time. But thanks for your time and explanations. We can talk about grammatics another time again if you want. Yes, I would love to talk more about this topic with you. Sure, see you later. Here we are going to talk about pragmatics uh, from the book, The Study of Language by George Yule, page 141. So according to uh, George Yule, semantic meaning looks at the same words and grammar used semantically except within context. So here um, uh, George Yule gives uh, a kind of uh, a difference between semantics and pragmatics. So the only difference of the study of meaning uh, is the context. In semantics, we are using the dictionary meaning or uh, the meaning of uh, the word in a sentence. But um, in pragmatics, uh, we are talking about the meanings within context. So this is actually the difference. In each situation, the various listeners in the conversation define the ultimate meaning of the words based on other clues that lend subtext to the meaning. But uh, within the conversation, um, according to semantics, that the listeners or the speakers will get the clues uh, what kind of meaning is used uh, within the context. For example, if you were told to crack the window and the room was a little stuffy and the speaker had just said prior to this that they were feeling a little warm, then you would know that the speaker would like you to open the window a crack or just a little. So according to this text that when someone who says that crack the window, now it doesn't mean that uh, crack or br break the window. But the situation is that someone who is feeling a little warm um, and the room is exhausted. So it means to say the meaning of these words would be open the window in this uh, situation of the conversation. For example, the same example, if you were with a friend who was locked out of his home and you were standing at the back door trying to get inside, your friend might say, Craig, that window. 
and literally mean to put a crack in the window or break in the window. Now the same example, uh, if someone who is uh, locked out of his home and he is uttering the same word that crack that window, it means to say break in the window because this is a different situation. So it depends upon the situation what could have been the meaning. So this uh, situational based or contextual based meaning uh, is called or the study of such kinds of meaning is called pragmatics. My leg. Hello. Cookies for sale. Go away, I'm not home. Uh, yes you are. I heard you. No, you didn't. This is a recording. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Watch this. Leave a message. Beep. Oh! Goodbye, recorded message. Agnes, come on. <clears throat> I'd like to see this shrink ray. Absolutely. Will do. As soon as I have it. You don't have it. Okay. Now I realize that you guys have probably heard about this other villain who stole the pyramids. Apparently it's a big deal. People are calling it the crime of the century and stuff like that. But am I upset? No, I am not. A little, but. Hello, Fred. FYI, your dog has been leaving little bombs all over my yard, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry. You know dogs. They go wherever they want to go. Someday I'm going to go to the moon. Oh. I'm afraid you're too late, son. NASA isn't sending the monkeys anymore. He sold 43 mini mints, 30 taco swirlies, and 18 coconutties. <sighs> okay. Well, you say that like it's a great sale day. Look at my face! Do you still think it's a great sale day? Hey. Team Coconutties. I think we can do a little better than that. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs>